بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful all praise due to Allah and we ask Allah some peace and blessings on his final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم so thank you very much for joining us um this is something that i'm very very passionate about and um last year i started something in ramadan which uh, i want to continue this year so one thing i will guarantee that if you stay you know to the end of the presentation today that your you know your mind will literally be like this guy yeah <laughs> promise that I will really deliver today inshallah with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in transforming your relationship with the Quran and set out a path inshallah for everybody here to make this Ramadan a, a month where you completely transform your relationship with the Quran. This past year has been very huge for me because our uh, um pushing out of what the children have been doing has blown me away yeah so we have these videos so i'll show you some of these videos so the most famous one is fatima's here okay so this video i'll play it for you boy is a verb and it means say huwa is a pronoun and it means he Allah is a proper noun and, he, and it means Allah. So this is Fatima when she was six. What we did is we put this as a little video on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. This video now has been seen by, you can see here, um, 91,000 people. So Fatima has become a little celebrity, celebrity. Now, because she was so good, one of my students, she inspired Uthaymeen, this guy, to do his video as well. So I'll play his as well. Surah Al Kafirun, Ayah 1. Qul is a verb which means say. Ya is a vocative, ya is a vocative particle. Ayuha is a nomin nominative noun. Together with the vocative particle means O. Oh. Al Kafirun means the disbelievers, which is a noun. So he is. Um... 10 he's 10 in this video fatima is six in this video this is now fatima age nine okay so play a bit more of this wasa is a verb the root letters are where sod and yeah it is a past tense verb it means enjoined b is a preposition it is her for ja. it is also mabni it means it <clears throat> ha is a pronoun. Ibrahim is a proper noun. It is fine because Prophet Ibrahim is doing the verb. And it has a um, dhamma, a dhamma at the end. Bani is a noun and means sons. It is mudaf ilay because they are Prophet Ibrahim's sons. So the first video we said she was um, six years old. And then this video, she's nine years old, and Uthaymeen here is 10 years old. If they can do it, you can do it, okay? You can absolutely do it. And we have to, I'm going to go through again what these three things were. So the, the approach is called Arabic in color, and it's built around three main principles, okay? The first principle is that we focus on reading, not speaking. And then when, because we do that, we don't have to do lots of memorization. Memorization is very important if you want to speak. It's less important if you want to read because reading is more about analyzing what's happening. Okay. The second thing is this idea of the Pareto principle. The Pareto principle is that you get 80% of the benefits from 20% of the concepts. Yeah. So when you focus on uh, uh, the core things in Arabic, you get a huge amount of benefits. And that's what I mean by that. And the third thing is prioritizing understanding. What I've found is that because people have forgotten English grammar, they don't actually understand when we explain the Arabic side of things. So if you've forgotten what a pronoun is, it's going to be very hard for you to understand what a pronoun is in Arabic. So focusing on understanding is really important. Once you can do that, you can directly access the Quran. Yeah. No longer do you have to memorize. No longer do you have to rely on translations. You can direct access to the Quran. And that's why I'm so excited about this, 
and and um why so many people have been watching the videos like i said here 91000 people have seen those those two videos because many many people also want to understand the quran yeah many people want to understand the quran let's get straight into it okay so when we say we're focusing on reading that's because our primary goal is to understand the quran when we read it yeah this idea of learning to speak arabic is nice but the only usage of it is really if you went to a muslim country or you had some arab arabic uh, uh, family it's not necessarily as useful as we would think. It's more useful to understand how to read um, versus speaking. We're not interested in just walking around and having chit chats with people in Arabic. Okay? To be able to understand reading, you just have to focus on three things. One is words, two is sentences, and three is verbs. Yeah? And we'll go into these three things, inshallah. So the way we've done it is we've I've developed something called Arabic in color. Let's have a look at this picture. Yeah, so we'll use a football analogy. So if you were to see this picture and you would try to work out who's playing for each team, it's very difficult to work that out. Yeah, because it's all the same color. And what would end happening, you would have to memorize each member and what they look like. So know what's who is in each team. The only way you could do that is to memorize each and every player. However, if you do it in color, so this is the way that we do it at the moment with Arabic. You have to memorize everything. Everything's the same color, and you just have to memorize each bit. But if you color everything in, yeah, so you, like if you want to do the old way, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. But there's 78,257 words in the Quran. It's very difficult to do this approach, to memorize every single word, okay? When you do it in color, look how easy it is. Straight away, you know who is playing for each team, Yeah. That's the power of color. That's the power of a color coding system. Okay. So you can apply this to the Quran. When the Quran is color coded, look how easy it is to work out what it is. Now you know that Bismi is actually two words. You've got a preposition and a noun. Then you know Allah here is a proper noun. It's the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call it Lafzul Jalala. And then you've got two adjectives here. Yeah. So that's the power of color. Let's take it and apply it onto sentences. Sentences is not about the individual. So carrying on with the football analogy, it's not about the individual players, but it's about their position in the team. So it's like, you know, when, we, when, when kids play football, they all just run after the ball. But the way people should play football is like this. Yeah. Everyone has a role in the team. That's what we mean by a sentence. What is the role of that word in the overall sentence? OK. And this is how it's done in color. It's all mapped out for you with direct with diagrams and everything here. It's all color coded. It just makes it so much easier. Yeah, it's explaining to you what the role of each word is. And then there's a special person in the football team called the goalkeeper who has his own set of rules. In Arabic, this would be the verbs. So the verbs, again, is all color coded and listed out for us here. OK. So that's that's the approach. Now, once we understand and we focus on learning how to read words, sentences and verbs, that's when we will be able to understand the Quran when we read it. OK. Now let's go on to the second rule, which is the Pareto principle. Not all of Arabic is equal. 80% of the benefits come from 20% of the concepts. That's the Pareto principle. Okay. Now in Arabic, 90% of the Quran is just these 12 words. Yeah. Pronouns, conjunctions, prepositions, demonstrative pronouns, definition, location, adverb, time, adverb, relative pronouns, proper nouns, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. If you understand these 12 definitions, you will understand 90% of the words of the Qur'an. In fact, in some surahs, you'll understand 100%. So you'll understand all of Surah Al-Falaq, for example. You'll understand all of Surah Al-Nas. Yeah? With sentences, there are three main roles. So if you look at the football analogy that we gave you, the three main roles here is you've got the, the forwards, the midfielder, and the defenders. Yeah, these are the three main roles. Again, Defender, midfield, attacker. You can apply that to Arabic. The three main things to really understand in terms of sentences that means that you can understand anything is the fa'il, the subject doer, the maf'ul bihi, the direct object, and the harf jar. If you understand these three things, which you can do in Ramadan, you will be able to analyze any sentence. Okay? So there's certain things if you really focus on, it gives you a huge amount of benefits. OK, and remember, some of this is a this is a syllabus. We're actively teaching and seeing the results with students. OK. 
The same with verbs as well. If you just learn Nasara as a verb, you will have learned 35% of the verbs of the Quran. Nasara is exactly the same as a whole bunch of other verbs. The only thing you do is you change over the letters to the other, uh, uh, the other letters of that verb. So for example, Nasara is the same as Kafara. Nasara Yansuru is the same as Kafara Yakfuru. Khalaqa Yakhluqu. Abada Ya'budu. Nazara Yanzuru. Dhakara Yadkuru. Qatala Yaqtulu. Dakhala Yadkulu. That one verb, Nasara, gives you 35% coverage. So when we say Arabic, we don't necessarily mean like you have learned every single aspect of Arabic. Do you've learned enough Arabic to have access to the Quran? Okay? Because Arabic is a, a never ending journey. Al Fiyat ibn Malik is 1,000 lines of poetry he wrote on advanced grammar. Yeah? You could keep on going forever with Arabic. Yeah? But to get a decent access to the language of the Quranic Arabic, you can focus your energies on specific things. Okay? So we've done the first thing, which was focus on reading, not speaking. Then the second thing, which is the Pareto principle. Now we're going to take those two things together and we're going to prioritize understanding. So we said, for example, with words, you have these core areas, these 12. Yeah. When we say prioritize uh, understanding, we need to really understand what we mean by these things. OK. And here I mean we need to understand it in terms of the English. Yeah. Not the Arabic even. So what is a pronoun? What is a pronoun? Yeah. Is a, there's a simple explanation that I've put here, which is pronouns provide a noun or pronouns are a proxy for a noun. When you say Ahmed, he is in the park, rather than saying Ahmed, Ahmed is in the park, which doesn't sound right. You use a pronoun, he. Ahmed, he is in the park. Uh, um, Aisha, she is in her, the living room. OK, so this is what we mean by simple explanation. Conjunctions connect words together. Yeah, so that's why and is a conjunction because it connects different parts of a sentence. Prepositions preposition the next word. Demonstrative pronouns demonstrate things. When you point at something, it's called demonstrative pronoun. This, that, these are called demonstrative pronouns. Definition defines something, so we know exactly what your thing you're talking about. The house that I live at is, is the house that you, is your is your home. A house could be anybody's house. Location adverbs and time adverbs either talk about location or time. Relative pronouns are like words like what, that. So you could say, I love the toy that was given to me by, by, by my uncle. Okay, so you have a clause after it. That's what a relative pronoun is. Proper, noun, proper nouns are the, the words that you put a capital letter at the beginning. Okay. And then you have nouns, verbs, and adjectives, which are really straightforward. Most people still remember those. Okay. But we have to get good at understanding this. The reason why a lot of people struggle with Arabic is because they've forgotten their English grammar. If you're from my generation, you were never even taught English grammar. Yeah. So that's why people struggle. So we focus a lot on understanding the concept and applying it to Arabic. Okay. The other thing, because this syllabus was built for children, we also have a more detailed but fun way of explaining it. Yeah. So we make it fun. So each concept, like the pronouns, we have a little story. Yeah. So here, for example, it's about somebody going to the park and losing their children, playing on the swings and things like that. And you have a list of all the pronouns. We have a little story of conjunctions. And then we list out all the conjunctions. We have a little story for prepositions. OK, a simple explanation. These are words that only come before nouns that show a relation between that noun and another words. OK, it's like you say. The car is in the garage. In is a call the preposition because it shows you the relationship between car and garage. Okay. Same for demonstrative pronouns. Same for definition. These are the core things. Remember Pareto principle. We're focusing on the things that give us the most benefits. Yeah. As adults, we don't have time to lose. Life is going to be finished pretty soon. We can't keep on delaying this. Yeah. I want you to understand the urgency of this. Yeah. We can't keep on. The Quran was sent as a message to us from Allah. We can't keep on not understanding it. There has to be a priority. It's like saying, and you're all religious people here today who've joined us, yeah? It's like the person who says, I don't have time to pray. You, you only have time. You're just allocating your time to something else and not praying and not doing your salah. So it's not that we're saying, look, learn. this is the problem I have. It's called Arabic, but actually I'm, we're teaching Quran. This is Quran. We're teaching Quran. This is a Quran lesson. This is not an Arabic lesson. This is a Quran lesson. I'm on a mission now. 
Yeah, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us. We have now students from across the UK. We were very much focused on Birmingham and Solihull. Now we have students from across the UK. If I, if, if people from Birmingham and Solihull are not interested, I'll get students from wherever in the world. Yeah. So we have students that are from Newcastle, uh, Manchester, London, South Wales. Yeah. There are people who recognize that this needs to change. That we can't not have. And alhamdulillah, may Allah reward the people from Quran.com because they did this color coding system. I don't. I can't take credit for that. Okay. I just built a syllabus on there. There, this was wouldn't it have been possible 10, 20, uh, would it have been possible 10 years ago? Because the updates were 20, 2013, yeah? I don't know when they first released it, but say 20 years ago, this didn't exist, okay? So we do the same for adverbs, relative pronouns, and then we have uh, um, the other types of pronouns. In Arabic, there's lots of different types of pronouns depending on what it's attached to. So there's... Um, Object pronouns, and then you have possessive pronouns, and then you have um, uh, another type of subject pronoun. Yeah, so that's what these are. Okay, so that's prioritizing understanding in terms of words. Remember our analogy: we had the football players. What team are they on? Are they the red team, blue team? What, are they, what what's that? What does that? Uh, what what team are they on? Okay, so you can think of words as like the team on the football player. Now we're looking at the role of the word. So what do I mean by the role of the word in the sentence? Let's look at this sentence. Ahmed talked to David. So Ahmed talked to David. Ahmed, in terms of words, is a noun. Talk is a verb. To is a preposition and David is a noun. Okay, that's what we mean by words. The sentence is the role of that word in the sentence. So we would say, Ahmed talked to David. Ahmed here is the subject. The subject is the one doing the verb. Yeah. Talked is the verb. Preposition is 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 the word to, and David is the object. So the thing that's being talked to, the thing that has the verb being done to it is called the object. Okay. This is now the sentence. Now, how do I know that Ahmad is doing the talking in English? Does anyone want to put it in the chat? Or if you're really brave, you can chat out on the mic. How do we know that Ahmed's doing the talking? I'm talking English here, not Arabic. Don't all go at once. I'll wait for somebody to put it in the chat. I'm not going to give you the answer, okay? So that's English, yeah? But there's a rule. You all know it. It's You don't even think about it. And that's it. He's at the start of the sentence. Thank you, Ahmed, yeah? So in English, it's the order. Arabic is not the order. Arabic, the subject, have a dhamma at the end. There are more detailed uh, parts of this we'll cover later. But Ahmed will have a dhamma at the end. Okay? The same here. Horses sleep in barns. Boats float. Oh, yes. I stopped you from... Because somebody unmuted themselves, so I stopped you from muting. I'll take that off later, inshallah, Ahmed. Yeah? Um, I, I know Ahmed. I'm Mara. So this is another example. Horses sleep in barns. So this sentence structure, this is a very, very, very common, popular sentence structure. Yeah, subject, verb, preposition, object. Boats, subject. Floats, because boats are doing the, the verb float. On is the preposition, object is the, water is the object. Horses is doing the verb sleep. And then it's attached to the object with the preposition in. And then the object is barns. Okay. So, here we have the fa'il. Maf'ul bihi and harf jar. Okay. Al fa'il is the subject doer. So in this case would be the fa'il would be horses or boats or Ahmad. The maf'ul bihi is David, barns or, or water. And the preposition, the harf jar, is either to, in, or on. This is what we need to get good at, which you can do in just Ramadan. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. And the way we do it is through using examples from the Quran. This is how we do it. So let's take an example now, okay? We're going to look at Surah Al-Nasr, okay? إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ Yeah? So here, the fa'il is, the subject do it is the word nasr. Because nasr is doing the verb jaa. Okay? And the rule is in Arabic that nasr here, nasr, 
is doing the word verb ja'a because it has a dhamma at the end. Yeah? That's the sign of it. Now, the way it would work if you were to do the if you were to do this over the over Ramadan is you need to write this out. And I will check if you understood it properly or not. Okay? So Nasr here, you'd actually write this out. This is what my students do. They have to fill in these packs and I check to see if they've understood it or not. That is what Fatima is doing here. So Fatima is on 4A. Okay. Uthaymeen is doing something uh, a bit more. Um, his brother's, his older brother is more advanced in the pack. This is him now um, just having a go at a surah. Yeah. Which is what Fatima is doing this other. But Fatima here, she's going through the pack. Okay. So this is what you do. Let's take another example. Okay, so I'm going to allow people to unmute themselves. Um, so you can unmute yourself. Who wants to have a go? So I've, did, I've given you this one. I'm going to go to the next one. And if you want to have a go, just put yourself, uh, take yourself off mute. See if you can work this out. Okay, so here Nasr is the fire, the subject doer, and it's doing the verb ja. Let's do the next one here. وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا he wants to have a go at that. It is a bit scary doing it in front of everyone else, but you're going to get the most benefit if you if you have if you're brave enough. Um, where it says it's um its burdens is the um, is that the verb? So, I didn't explain this. It's all color coded, so the verb has a v underneath it, and it's in green. Yeah. So what do you think the verb is? I think we've lost the system. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah. Um, so the verb. Yeah. So part of this that I've, I've taken this for granted. So I'm so used to this. I don't realize people don't know this. So when I first asked my daughter, what did she think V means? She thought it meant vegan. Yeah. So, you know, that's like the common th green V means vegan, doesn't it? Yeah. Especially if you're a kid, because that means you can eat the sweets. Because then it's even though it's, it's not halal, if it's if it's vegan or vegetarian, you can eat the sweet. So they're very used to that. So it, it, the labeling system here, V means verb. Okay. So which word is doing the verb akhrajat and brings forth? Anyone have a go? The earth. <laughs> the earth. Very good. Excellent. Well done, sister. So the earth is doing that verb. Okay. And the sign is that it's got a dhamma at the end. So Arat here has got a dhamma at the end, just like. Nasr has got a dhamma at the end. Okay. Now, by the third example, you don't need these labels anymore. We're going to do the third example. Yeah. Because you've done two. So the third one, you can just recognize it. So what word here is doing? So the qala is the verb. Which word is the subject? Subject doer. Insan. Insan. Is that what you said, Ahmed? Yeah. Yes. Good. Insan. Excellent. Okay. That's how quickly you can get it. Now, what I probably spent uh, like a thousand hours writing the syllabus. This is a good like six, seven years of my life. Yeah. The hardest part of writing the syllabus was finding relevant examples from the Quran. That was the hardest part. Yeah. And trying to find them from Juz Amma, ideally. Okay. Because then by doing ayahs from the Quran, firstly, you're familiar with these ayahs. A lot of you know Surah Al-Nasr. They know, you know Surah Al-Zalzala. Yeah. So you know that I so have already memorized it. They say we're not focusing on memorizing, but focusing on Quran, we've already memorized what we're trying to do anyway. Okay? So waqal al-insanu, we know the ayah. Now we know this idea of a subject doer. Okay? And the subject doer here is insan, and it's doing the, the subject, the, the verb qala. That's why we need to focus on memory, because that for some of you, that's going to be like, well, I didn't quite get that. That's what you need to focus on. You need to get your head around subject, object, verb, that way of doing things. You need to understand how that works, okay? So that is the subject doer. Um, let me just give this other. So what Ramadan will be is you will have something called the Ramadan challenge pack, okay? And you have... 20 examples to get through if you get through all 20 you will know you will have done all of the 12 main types of words 
you will have done, because that's the 90%, but even the remaining 10%, you will have done 16 of the 32 remaining other types. Yeah? So there's 12 main types, and then there's 32 other types. You'll have done 16 of them. So it's probably about like 95% of the Quran you will have done. In sentences, you will have covered the three core types of sentences, and also you will have covered 68 types of verbs. Here is an example of the direct object. So we've done the subject. Let's do the direct object, okay? Now, the direct object he here is the thing that the verb is being done to. So the ayah here is Who wants to have a go at this? I know you're all brand new to this, so I don't expect people to know this from now. But this is if somebody has the confidence to have a go, I can give you some feedback. Is it Rabba? Excellent, sister. Well then, so Rabba, do you know what the sign is that is the object? The verb. Good. So you're working from the meaning, yeah? With yes. time, what will happen? The sign is that it's got a fatha at the end. So the, okay. the subject had a dhamma, the object had a fatha. So there's a rule there, yeah? But we need to build it up step by step. We need to go through each one. What I realize is if you go baby steps, Eventually you don't you don't eventually you don't need these colors anymore. Eventually you don't need these labels anymore. Eventually. Okay. But we just set, set out on that journey. We go step by step. And the last one is the the word after the preposition. Yeah, remember we said the preposition? So who wants to have a go at this one? What's the word here that's after the preposition? The preposition is labeled in red and it's got a P underneath it. So what's the word after the preposition here? Anybody? Uh, the word be me. B. Yeah. Yeah. So B is the preposition. It's ismi is the word after the preposition. Okay. Now the word after the preposition Arabic here, the sign is that it's got a kasra at the end. Okay. So that's the sign. So the first one was dhamma, the second was fatha, the third one's kasra. Now you know why you have fatha kasra dhamma at the end of words. Yeah. That's very, very satisfying, the fact that you now know that, okay? Because before you just know zebra zebish, okay? We even created, like, equivalent words for them in other languages. But, but, but it, has a, it has a usage. With time, I'll give an example. Uh, I was once praying behind an imam, and he said, instead of saying, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ, he said, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ نُوحٌ. Yeah, he's a hafiz, but he didn't, hasn't done any grammar. It's very common with that. What he did... He made, the ayah says that the people of Nuh denied. <clears throat> what he said is that Nuh alayhi salam denied. Astaghfirullah. Okay, because he made Nuh fa'il just by putting the dhamma at the end instead of a kasra. Okay, so each, each uh, that's the way it works in Arabic. Now, it's not complicated, just like when I said Ahmed talked to Ali. That wasn't complicated that you knew who was talking. You just know the rule. Yeah. So it's just a series of rules that we learn, okay? But now Ramadan, now is the time that we prioritize this, okay? So this is the challenge pack. You go through these. Now, here's the thing. Once you've done the fa'il, all these other sentence roles are, 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 do exact, are exactly the same as the fa'il. So these other things called na'ib fa'il, mubtada, khabar, ism kan, ism, khabar, inna, all act in the same way that the fa'il does, okay? If you do the object, maf'ul bihi, all of these act in exactly the same way as the maf'ul bihi. So you do maf'ul bihi and you can understand all of these. Yeah? When you do uh, the word after the preposition, this other thing called mudafile acts in exactly the same way as this one. So you learn three sentence roles and then you understand all of them. Okay? But you really understand those three because you have an example from the Quran for each of those three. You've thoroughly done them. And then everything else becomes a lot, lot easier. This is now, this is my, one of my advanced students, Jamal. This is, what, this is what he will send me. So I usually have a class on Fridays. And um, across all our classes, our top students are working through these packs. Okay. And some of their parents are working through them as well. So it's like it becomes like a nice bonding experience for both of them. Yeah. So we have classes for all our, uh, we have classes for children now. So we've now opened classes um, 
we Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we've, we're now uh, finalizing our Monday class. Yeah. So that today isn't for children. Today is for adults. But we have that. But a lot of our adults are working through these packs with the children. OK. Now, let's just talk a little bit about verbs and then we'll open up for questions because we haven't really talked about verbs. Now, each each uh, 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 page will have a link to this website. This is the website where we've taken everything from. Oops. OK, so this is the website. Yeah. When you click on the verb, it actually gives you some details about the verb. Yeah. So let me just explain to you what this is all about. Ah, oh, I've lost my page now. So bear with me a second. Okay. So what we need to do with verbs, you just need to understand what this means here at the bottom. First person, all that stuff. So I'll give you a quick summary of this. This is the way that I approach this. Is we we look at it in terms of the human body. So the human body is made up of the head. Okay, so eyes, ears, and mouth. So every verb, you need to know, is it male or female? Is it uh, gender, male or female? Quantity, so is it talking about one, two, or three? Singular, dual, or plural? And then something called person, first, second, or third person. I won't explain these. If you know them, you know them. If you don't, then you'll learn them as you're going through the pack, yeah? Then you have to know if it's active or passive. So active is when we know who what the file is so i mentioned only about the file so we say ali ate the cake so we know ali ate the cake but if we say the cake was eaten the verb eaten is passive because you don't know who actually ate the cake we're just focusing on the cake okay then the main thing in verbs is tense so what tense is it so is it a past tense known as perfect tense is it a present tense known as imperfect so past tense in english would be eight Present will be eating, uh, or is it command, which is called the imperative, like eat the cake. You say to Ali, eat the cake. Okay. Then you have nouns that are derived from verbs. Okay. Like the active participle, the one who's doing the verb, the eater, or the passive participle, the, the thing that's being eaten. Okay. And then you have something called the verbal noun, the, the act of eating. These are all derived from verbs. Okay. Then you have something really cool in Arabic, which is like a unique to Arabic called forms. Yeah, forms. And there's 10, 10 main forms. And this will be a big thing that you will learn as part of this, this journey. Now, the majority of the Quran is just form one. Yeah, but you'll learn about these other forms. It's like, like nationalities, if you think about it in terms of the body analogy, it's like nationalities. Okay. Then you'll learn about the root letters as well. So each verb has root letters. And some root letters cause like a disability to the verb. So for example, in the Surah Tahrim, there's a verb that's literally just one letter. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ladina amanu, hu and fusakum. Okay, the wow and the alif here are, are pronoun. The verb is literally just one letter because it was originally three letters, two of them dropped. Yeah. And in terms of the, the forms, each form has a change in, in, uh, in meaning. Okay, so for example, the form one is the general meaning, yeah? But form two makes it either more intensive or causative. I'll show you an example of this in a second, yeah? Then you have um, mutual action where you have two people. If you have a verb, you have two people involved in that verb. Reflexive means that the person who's doing the verb and the verb is being done to the same thing. The subject and the object are the same. Let's take some examples of this, yeah? So let's take an example here of uh qata means to cut qata which is form 2 makes it more intense so it means to cut it into pieces qata as we said needs to have two parties so qata means you disassociate with someone you cut someone off qata yeah if you take this next verb um dhakara dhakara is to remember yeah uh dhakara you have two people Sorry, dhakara is to remember. Dhakara is what we call causative. You're making someone remember. It's called uh, causative. When you're making someone else remember, like alima is to, to learn. Alama is to teach. You're causing someone to uh, someone else to learn. Yeah. Um, dhakara is when two of you are reminding each other. So the forms have slightly different roles. Reflexive. Um, tadhakara is to remember something. Why? 
because the one who is learned, who's doing the reminding and the one who's receiving the reminding is the same. I'll give you an easier example. Um, you have something like to learn. Learn is a reflexive verb because the one who's learning, so I'm teaching myself. Like to teach someone is allama. Ta'allama is to teach myself. In other words, to learn. Okay? So these are the things that you will pick up as you're going through the pack. You'll, you'll go and check these things. Okay? So that is the plan, inshallah. Okay? And if you, if you get to the end of this pack, when you read, you know, people will literally, um, when, they, when they see you reading, they'll go, Oh my God! Okay? The kids love these, by the way. This is why I have them. Some adults like them as well, okay? So you'll be able to do what Fatima's doing. Or they're just working through this pack. They're not like, they are clever, okay? But they're not like geniuses. But when people when they read, people should literally will go, what? Yeah, that's why they're, they're the ones who are getting these views. It's not me. My videos have got like 10 views or whatever. It's not like, no one's particularly interested in me, yeah? They're interested in these kids, mashallah. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm going to skip this. Now, I, I tried something last year and it didn't work. So last year, I just, I recorded these videos, a 30-day intensive, and I just said to everyone, do it for free. Uh, doing it for free didn't work. When it's just completely for free, it didn't work. Now, before you log off and think, I'm going to sell you something, I'm not, okay? I'm going to give you the first five videos for free. The first five videos, so up to here, okay? Because I know all of you want to go away and, and think about it and absorb it a bit more. But... If you're happy with the first five videos, you have to make not a £15 payment to me, but a £50 donation. Yeah. So there's going to be different options depending on what you get. The more of I'm happy to give my time for the sake of Allah, as long as you donate money to charity. And it'll be between like Gaza and Syria. Yeah. Because I always do a fundraiser every year. But rather than saying to me, oh, I'm riding a bike somewhere, donate to me. I'm going to serve you guys for free. As long as you do the work and as long as you donate. Okay. So the basic level will be 50 pounds where you just get the, the Ramadan pack. Then there's another one where you get the full course. Then there's another one where I actually give you feedback on every single sheet in the Ramadan pack. Yeah. That's going to be more expensive. And then the top level will be you can join me in a live session where I can give you live feedback. Okay. So each one will have a band. You make the donation to, it'll be like a launch good, you know, just giving type website. So I, I don't take any of the money. It goes there. But doing it free doesn't work. It was very painful. Nobody finished it last year. Nobody. Two guys finished the videos. Nobody did any of the sheets. There's something about you putting some money down that makes you committed. Even if you're paying it to charity. You're all going to give money, money to, in charity. You're all, mashallah, all very generous. You're all going to give money to charity anyway. Yeah. So why not, you know, help me encourage you and maybe i get some of that reward as well inshallah okay because every year i do some the usual fundraiser that i do every year we might not be able to do it this year which is why i thought of this idea instead okay but my 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 promise is that if you complete the packet will change your life 100 percent. and then maybe you can be making videos like these guys as well okay i don't need the person's face i don't even need your, your hand just like a finger if you want okay the more people that we get like this the amount of reward that these two children have got is, is immeasurable, okay? Because people are seeing Pakistani, Bangladeshi children, they can do this, you can do it as well, okay? So, I also recognize the majority of people will not take action. Even in this call, the number of participants went up to like 26 and now it's 18, yeah? Not everyone's going to do this. And that's fine if you're going to learn Arabic through some other method. No problem. If you think, actually, I don't like this, this is not a good strategy. No problem. But if you're going to say, I'm not going to learn Arabic, you have to, this might be like a, a um, might come back on the day of judgment to you because the resources have been so simplified and made so easy for people that if you still don't want to do it, then you've got nobody to blame but yourself. Okay. There's nothing now, you know, we can't say, well, you know, I'm not from an Arab family, this and that. This is not, I'm learning Arabic so I can talk and I can I can order a falafel sandwich. This is understanding the Quran. This is part of our Quran journey. When the Sahaba heard the Quran, they heard an Arabic and they became Muslim. Okay, that's how powerful this was. Okay. So this is my mission. I feel 
I don't feel that motivated about helping adults. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Most adults don't do the work. Kids, I get results with kids because they have to, do, they're used to doing homework and getting told off by their parents if they don't do it. Adults, you can't tell adults off. Yeah. It doesn't work. Okay. So you can pay money, pay money to charity. So you don't think, oh, Moran's making money from this, all that kind of stuff. And all of that goes out the window. It's Ramadan. Everyone's donating anyway. So you were going to donate anyway. Why not put a, put a, Put your money where your mouth is, put a commitment down, make a pledge and do the pack. Yeah. Go through the pack. And 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 trust me, you will see huge results, inshallah. OK, right. What we'll do, we'll open up the questions, inshallah. If I help one person, if I just help one person, I'm happy, alhamdulillah. But you, uh, we have on the WhatsApp group about 30 people who have joined. Everybody who joins, I want I want you to post your stuff on the WhatsApp group because what happens, FOMO is a real thing. Fear of missing out is real. If one person does it and you are posting your stuff on the WhatsApp group, you will inspire everybody else to do it as well. The mums of these kids have become like celebrities. Parents have come to me and they're excited to meet these parents. Yeah. So it's not about me. It's like even about them. So you will have a huge influence on other people and untold reward you can get, inshallah. Okay. Good point. I will post the link to the WhatsApp group. Um, if you have a question, either put it in the chat or uh, just take yourself off mute. I have finished everything I wanted to cover. So, um, bismillah. If you have a question, just put your mic on. I'm, I'm going to try and multitask. Any questions? Mashallah. Looks like I explained it incredibly well, so there's no questions, inshallah. Um, yeah, the plan is we'll do it. I mean, it depends. If nobody signs up to it, then then we won't. I'll just do it. It's much easier for me not to do live. So it will be a. You will have to make a big donation if you want me to come live. It will need to be a big It will need to be a big donation. Okay. Um, how do you sign up? What I will do on the first day of Ramadan. I will. Um, um, yeah, the first day of Ramadan, I will drop the link. So inshallah, we get the reward of it being in Ramadan as well. Because I'm, I'm sure all of you want to donate in Ramadan anyway. Um, so we'll do that. No problem, inshallah. Um, how do my kids sign up? If you want your kids, message me. Because we're, we're starting a new class on Monday. So once the class has started then, and the class has already got enough people to start. So if you want your kids to start, message me, inshallah. With kids, it's like a five. Uh, kids, it's a lot easier because they they kids stay with us for like five to ten years, yeah. So it's much easier with kids. Um, adults, there's more urgency involved. No, no, it's not. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. Yeah, it's just rules that you don't know. So the point is, is that how do we approach learning these new rules? Yeah, let me just do this. Give me a second because a lot of questions are coming in. I just want to do this. Um, I'll put the link to the WhatsApp group in the chat. Yeah, so last year was quite painful for me because last year no one did it. So I was like, All right, people need to pay some money this time. So do it the thing is if you want to help people um there's also an element of psychology as well so i think this is why doing it in ramadan doing it as a fundraiser so this is basically a fund i'm doing this a fundraiser this is basically a fundraiser yeah but it's a fundraiser where you can benefit okay so it's a fundraiser and you're learning quran i think that will work i think that will work i think this year more people will do the work that's my, i'm optimistic inshallah okay Good. Right. Um, how much time do we need to spend? Do we, uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. What I would suggest is you try to do one sheet and time it and then multiply that by because it's 20 sheets. But actually each it's 20 lessons, but each one's got three in it. So it's about 63 in total. Yeah. 63. Now, the full 30 videos has got more stuff in it and other than other than the, the core thing is just those 63 sheets. OK, but there are other things as well. If you want to do the full 30, so that's the minimum. The minimum is to do the 63 sheets. 
Because what's going to happen, you're going to you're going to look at. Let's go back to our example. OK, so because this is one of them. By the way, I've put the link to the WhatsApp group in the chat. OK, so this is one of them. So the way you would do this is you'd look everything up. So either is a time adverb, ja is a verb, nasr is a noun, Allah is a proper noun, or the laftul jala, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is a conjunction? This alif lam is a determiner, and fath is a noun. It's all color coded. You'd go and check. You'd go back here and you check where everything is, right at the beginning here. Yeah? So you check where everything is. It's all color coded. So that's part of it. So that's the word side. The second part is doing the sentence. So you're only going to focus on the thing in the red square. You don't need to worry about the other things. So that you need to really make sure you understood, understand why Rob here is the direct object. Like you need to be able to explain it. Remember, because we said focus on understanding. And that's that, that that's the whole thing. It's getting your head around that. Okay? Getting your head around it and doing that. And then the final bit is the verb. So you're going to go and actually which verb is here? Ya'budu. What what type of what tense is it? Is it singular? Is it male? Is it first, second, third person? Maybe you don't know what first, first second, third person is. So you're going to go and check that. A lot of this, by the way, is learning English. It's not learning Arabic. I've really re seen this. A lot of this is learning English. Okay? Because we never got taught it at school. Yeah? That's a big part of it. Okay? I do not have this level of motivation outside of Ramadan. I have this level of motivation for, for our students. But I have a peaked level of motivation in Ramadan okay so I'm really everyone does for everything it's just I think every every Muslim mashallah in Ramadan we're all super pumped up we will go and pray 20 rakahs taraweeh in the masjid and then outside of Ramadan we'll be lucky if we pray two rakahs yeah so I'm pumped up you're pumped up you know we can do this you can't you're gonna there's barak in Ramadan which you don't have inside of Ramadan shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran shahru Ramadan it, the month of Ramadan is the month that the Quran was revealed this is the month of Quran okay don't see this as I'm learning Arabic. You're learning Quran. Okay. So this is the time to crack this. If you've never cracked it, let's crack it together. Okay. Let's let's do this together. I'm super motivated. you I will get mo I get motivated when I see results. If I don't see results, it really brings me down. Fatima has so much reward on the day of judgment. Um, and and even also I would say there's another sister, another parent, Dr. Sabina. She has her kids with us. I did. I tried to do uh, Facebook, Instagram, and, I, and I, uh, I lost a lot of money. I didn't. It didn't work. So she actually, like, made a financial contribution. Said, "No, keep on trying it." And that's when we worked it out, and we got these ninety thousand views. Yeah. But the first attempt actually just was was a big flop. Yeah. So I get motivated if I see you know people in the group and people are posting stuff and people are learning. I find that very very motivating. Yeah. Because alhamdulillah, it's like, you know, we're doing something special here, inshallah. Okay, I'll stop talking now. Any questions? Yes, Ahmed. Yeah, uh, can I summarize that? Uh, noun has fatha, kasra, and doma. And those determine whether it's an object or verb. Uh, ob object or subject. Is it? Not noun. So we're now, we need to take it one step at a time. Okay, all right. What will happen, Ahmed, when you submit your sheets... I will know. I will see where you're um, not getting it quite right. Okay. So if we go to an actual example, okay, Here's this one here. Let's go to an easy example. Yeah. Let's go to one of these. Yeah. So, not that it's a noun, but it's got a dom at the end because it's the subject. It's because it's doing the verb ja. Ah. It's not got a dhamma at the end because it's a noun. Is that okay. your question? Yeah? Right. Okay. So the dhamma is more to do with the role it plays in the sentence. And if it's kasra and fatha is an object, right? If it's fatha, it's object. If it's kasra, then it's going to be something else. Okay. So okay. the whole definition of grammar in Arabic is that you know why the word ends in that particular way. That's the whole point of grammar. Yeah. Um, if right. we can read and understand English without knowing the grammar, why do we need to learn the grammar? What does that help? I don't understand how this helps to understand the Quran. What is grammar, Suraya? What is grammar? Put your mic on. Let's have a chat about this.
there are people who say maybe this is you know you might have heard someone says don't learn grammar okay you don't need grammar necessarily to learn how to speak speaking is basically you learning lots of phrases and then push, pushing them together okay but reading quran is understanding what's going on in the ayah that's what we mean by understanding the grammar of the arabic of the quran is understanding what's happening okay so if i said to you ah if say you're from your say you're chinese and you're learning english and you say ahmed talk to ali how are you going to know who's talking you have to know the rule you have to know the rule in english is the order so the subject is the one that comes first that's a rule you have to you can't get around that you see like especially if you're trying to analyze shakespeare for example then you need to know grammar grammar is basically understanding the rules it's like watching football and not knowing the rules you can watch it you know in the world cup everyone watches football yeah like grandma watches football she doesn't know the rules but she just knows basic oh goal that kind of stuff you can get away with it but if you want to know proper football you need to understand the rules you need to understand the offside rule because suddenly the goal the goal is disallowed and you don't know why it's been disallowed so there are rules to football there are rules to arabic we know the rules this is the sad thing we know the rules of football we don't know the rules of arabic just take a second to reflect on that yeah we know the rules of football we don't know the rules of arabic yeah okay any more questions good a bunch of people have joined the whatsapp group which is good because i'm not that's my going to be my main method of communication and that group will close down after ramadan okay so that you take advantage of that just for ramadan after ramadan we'll see what happens okay but is this a good place to start to learn to the, understand the quran this is the place to start sister this is the place to start okay if if a six year old child can do it, don't feel that you can't do it. Okay, and you, and, and and kids are better at memorizing, but adults are better at understanding. Okay. So kids are better at the, and then us at memorizing, but we're better than them at understanding. And if a six year old can do it, I mean, I can send you, I can show you loads of other kids as well. They're not the only kids. Yeah, I've got loads of kids like this, mashallah. Um, they can do it. You can do it. Okay, but it's, I think Ramadan we prioritize this. I think that's what it is. I think the rest of the uh, everything else is just more important. Whereas Ramadan, everyone pauses and says, you know what? I'm going to prioritize this. People might not read Quran during the year, but they read it in Ramadan. Yeah? So just see this as Quran. Don't see it as Arabic. Just like you learn, it's harder, I think, to learn how to read Arabic than to understand it. Yeah, because learning how to read it, you have to learn the alphabet. You have to do Fatha Kasra Dhamma. It's not easy, but we just did it. And we're used to it. But now we just take it for granted, but it's not easy. Yeah, ask so, Barry from work, he's really going to struggle. You know, when people become Muslim, they really struggle to learn to read. Yeah. Anything so what, what I tend to do in Ramadan is I'll watch uh, videos on YouTube of a particular surah and then read the English translation ayah by ayah. How is you're this happy, better if you're happy to carry If you're happy to carry on. No, I'm just that. saying, what's the difference? I just want to understand the difference in the benefit. Well, the difference is you don't need that translation anymore. You just read it directly and stand it. That's what I, I haven't learned the words though, have I? Is this teaching us though each word what it means as well? So the there there is if you want to memorize, if you want to understand it without any translation, then yes, there will be a there's an element of memorizing vocabulary. Okay. Uh, yeah. But but you can crack surah by surah, um, the vocab for each surah, but learning it's learning qala as a word and then qul as another word, and yaqulu as a third word, is, I believe, harder than just learning that there's a verb called qali yaqulu, and mm. this is how what it looks like in the past tense, present tense, future tense, etc. Yeah? All right, I think I've missed the point. You're not just teaching the grammar, we're actually learning the meaning of key words as well. No, I'm, I'm not focusing too much on, I mean, you'll, you can, in, as you go through the pack, you will pick up the translation of these particular words but i am focusing on grammar i think people okay. get scared of grammar because they I don't am scared of grammar <laughs> yeah i don't and, and i was i i forgot when i started when i went on this journey i couldn't remember my english grammar that's part of it that's why i said we're focusing on understanding we're not focusing on memorizing for oh, this okay. for this ramadan challenge i'm gonna you're gonna push yourself outside your comfort zone and you're gonna surprise yourself yeah you're gonna surprise <laughs> yourself because i'm giving you guys a lot of time i'm willing in ramadan to give you guys a lot of time for free basically it's free i'm not taking any money for it because i want people to i want i feel that ramadan is a time where a lot of people can progress okay and we'll see what happens after ramadan but for ramadan you know people can really progress inshallah
Any more questions? I think we'll wrap up everyone because we've been going for a while. Um, it is recorded, but um, I think if you've attended, you don't really need to watch the recording. Um, tell other people if you want, if you want them to join. We're at about now 44 members now. I, you know, if it's too much for me, I'll have to close it. I don't know. We'll see. You know, if a lot of people are doing it and alhamdulillah, getting loads of donations and stuff like that. I have found this past year, I've got sometimes completely overwhelmed. My WhatsApp, like I open in the mornings, like 60 unread messages and hundreds of groups. And I think I've been too generous with this. So I will close it at the end of Ramadan. And I, I'm happy I did this year, had a lot of people mess and I just threw them out of loads. I threw loads of people out of different WhatsApp groups because I just felt they were not serious and they're wasting my time. Yeah. So I, if someone is working and doing the work, I have a lot of time for that person. If somebody is messing me around, I really, I no longer have patience for that anymore. Maybe I'm getting a bit older now, but I just don't have any patience for that. Just curious about the structure in Ramadan. Will we do the sheet and then have live? So it depends. So you don't have to do the live lessons. It just depends what option you go for. So I'll, I'll, um, so basically there'll be an option. Like it'll be like, 50 pounds if you just want um, the sheets, up to like a thousand pound if you want the live sessions. But like I said, these are all donations. So you can just count it as part of your zakah or whatever you want to do. It's up to you, okay? Um, but that, yeah, I want, I, I want to, uh, you know, inshallah, my, I want to get reward from my last pound color. So if someone's going to give like a thousand pound, I'll give them a live session. I, have, I don't have a problem with that, inshallah. Um, no problem, sister. Um, we'll, re we'll wrap it up. You're on, I'm on the WhatsApp group. You can ask me questions on the WhatsApp group, inshallah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك